the nominating committee, and I'll be interviewing Derek Kluge for the position of member at large, and have a few questions for him. First, we'll just start out um, with uh, a general introduction. Can you please tell us about yourself and your professional background? Um, and please make sure to include you know, any kind of clinical and academic roles that you've had. Um, and any association roles or participation you've had through AM, uh, as well as other organizations. Yeah, you bet. And uh, thank you guys both for taking the time out of the day to do this. I actually really like this um, a lot in our um, 21st century mediums. I think it's great for everybody to get to at least see each other as opposed to just being um, something that is on a handwritten piece of paper and such. So. Uh, my current role right now is I'm an assistant professor at Duke University in the Doctor of Physical Therapy division. I teach in the MSK course series. I also course in our course direct our evidence-based practice series and as well as our outcomes courses. And in our new curriculum, we'll actually be moving into where I'll be directing the advanced uh, uh, practice series courses as we actually call them. And uh, in that, I'll be actually um, the manual therapy course. I'm excited to get back really in heavily involved in that. Uh, my background uh, specific to fellowship training in manual therapy is, is I uh, went through the Evidence in Motion Manual Therapy Fellowship Program, uh, but really all my entire career I've been interested and passionate about uh, manual therapy. In fact, I think uh, I was uh, employed for about four days as a physical therapist. I took my first education course, which was a manual therapy course. So since that time, I've been uh, really engaged and involved with that. Uh, my current role right now with AOMP is I am the member at large. Um, and with that role, I'm a liaison to numerous committees, which is uh, really a fun thing to, to be a part of and really seeing the academy at a, a more 30,000, uh, 20,000 foot overview and really seeing how everything kind of functions together uh, has been something I've had a nice opportunity to do and be a part of. And I can speak to some of those things later as I get to some of, uh, maybe some other opportunities. Uh, Previously, I've also served on uh, the uh, academic clinical faculty SIG. I was actually a member of the, uh, the first um, executive uh, committee for the uh, academic clinical faculty SIG, so I have a very strong interest in that. And funny, at the time, I was on the ACF SIG and I was a clinician at the time, and, and who knew that I would actually be transitioning at some point to academia, but maybe that was a catalyst that got me there, and I, I can't uh, thank that role I think about. Uh, APTA-wise, I've been quite involved as well. Um, I have served in the past for four years on the APTA Annual Conference Committee, uh, as it was previously known as, currently known as the APTA Next Conference. I chaired a conference uh, one of the years for that, and so that really allowed for me to see a lot of the things that go on at a conference level, which I think is really important, especially in the American Academy Manual Physical Therapy, where you know much of what we do is dependent upon our conference that we provide. Uh, I've also served with the APTA on the Orthopedic Practice Committee and then on other numerous committees within that. Uh, I did, I've did. i been a PT now for, um, gosh, I don't even want to say anymore. You know, there's a point where you kind of like you want to say and then you don't want to say anymore. Um, but I've been a PT now for about almost, uh, I guess, 17 years. I uh, graduated from the University of Montana, which is the state that I'm from, and, and, and very uh, have a strong affection toward. Uh, but I guess that's probably a little bit of my uh, professional background. Okay, thanks so much. Um, so for the second question, uh, what's your vision for AOM if you're elected as member at large? Yeah, you know, I think um, this is a challenging question. Uh, you know, my vision and the Academy's vision, um, you know, I, I first and foremost, uh, I am involved with AOM because I truly believe in the mission, the vision, the values, and everything that AOM stands um, for and the Academy stands for. So with that disclosure, I'll answer the question uh, specific to what my vision is uh, for that. Uh, you know, one of my favorite quotes whenever you get asked this question, because this is always a question that's going to come up, so you get to think about it a little bit there, is you don't know where you're going unless you know where you come from. Um, and while I've not been um, I've been the academy since inception. Um, I've been a member for quite a while, and I've had opportunities either as a non-fellow member, um, and then as a fellow member, and then now my current board role, and even observing or researching uh, what AOMP was before even my exposure to the academy was. I recognize that one of the strengths of the academy 
is the ability to be nimble and, and, and adapt. And I think that that is something that, you know, in, a, in an ever-changing healthcare system, and uh, one thing that is for sure is that uh, change is certain, especially in healthcare. And, you know, we've evolved in many ways over the, uh, the decades, um, and I think that we're going to obviously continue to see these, these evolutions change in the way that care is delivered, also in just the maturation of our profession of itself. Uh, so in, you know, manual physical therapy, we've seen a lot of our significant influence from research, uh, influence how clinical practice is delivered in terms of also the confidence in terms of clinical practice and the way that clinical reasoning is performed. Not to say that obviously clinical skills and expertise is still something that has to be nurtured, which is really where fellowship programs come into play. We've seen that change. And so AOP has done a really good job of being able to adapt to that. I think that my vision is, is that we continue to have that ability to adapt and be nimble uh, as a profession. You know, we are, uh, if we look at some of the members of, our, um, of the academy, and actually the majority of the members of our academy, we're movers and groovers, right? We've got individuals that are producing some of the most impactful research in not just manual therapy, but in physical therapy, and not even just physical therapy, but even just in, in health care. And I think that that is something that we can leverage to our strengths um, in, in, in the end as well. Um, but I think if you were to ask me, like, an, like objectively, what do I want to get accomplished um, during my, you know, potential uh, short three-year term, I would say that the biggest thing is growth in numbers, or, or, or membership growth. Um, it's a proxy measure of what we're doing, right? It's a measure of are we doing something right? And as the membership grows, that means that we are serving the needs of our uh, members and potential members uh, to really, you know, give of themselves to become uh, engaged in the academy. But beyond just the numbers as well, I think it's also important that we not only develop or, or grow the numbers, but also grow the members. And what I mean by that is, is that having opportunities for uh, leadership development, um, transition leadership development, and really looking at the state and the committees and, and, and really emboldening them to become even more of what they are doing for the academy. And, and I think that there are some things that we're considering doing that I would definitely be in full support of in developing our future leaders. Um, you know, when we get to points where you're either serving on an executive committee or you're serving on a, com uh, a committee or you're serving on a special interest group, um, having leadership um, development is, is key. And it's actually one of the reasons why a lot of Academy and so giving back to the members in that regard, um, I think it's important to that. Another accomplishment, though, that I would like to see is, is and I think that this is something that's really come about over the last couple of years. You know, when we look at um, AOM, you know, what we are built on is we're built on uh, the fellowship programs, right? Uh, we have uh, a number of our members are obviously those that have graduated from fellowship training, and I think. One of the things that we need to do over the next one, two, three years is to ensure that our programs are allowed to be successful. Um, fellowship training, I do believe, is one of the greatest opportunities um, that we can provide for physical therapists. I certainly have um, benefited from it greatly. So access to fellowship training should not be something that is met with extensive therapy. Uh, so PTs, especially these newer graduates that are coming out that are, are really burdened with high student loan repayment and such uh, really need to have some of those barriers removed so that they can professionally develop themselves. And so it's essential that AON provide uh, the necessary support to programs so that they can deliver efficient and high quality and cost effective programs to further advance the training of physical therapists um, and those who especially want to endeavor in manual therapy. Our fellowship programs, you know, I, again, are essential to the academy, uh, both in terms of numbers and those who are actively engaged in. Uh, the academy. And again, like I said, it's a proxy measure of success of what we're doing. But that being said, if we look at the membership numbers and the membership trends, it's fascinating because fellowship members is the, is the area that consistently grows year by year by year, especially over the last eight years. Uh, and I think that that's going to continue to grow, especially if we can ensure that we are uh, eliminating those barriers uh, that may be uh, in place. Also, too, with the recent bylaw changes of uh, not having to renew fellowship, I think we'll be able to continue to grow those fellowship numbers um, very well. Uh, but if you look at the membership trends, the one area that um, doesn't change, and in fact, it kind of goes up and then it goes down, then it goes up and then it goes down, is our non-fellow members. 
And I think one of the things that I would actually like to do, especially as a member at large, specific to the role that I may have, is to um, enhance that growth area. I think there's a really good opportunity for us there. And, and I, I think there's a few things that we can do with this. Um, for for a, a, a sort of a numbers perspective on this, uh, we have come close, really close, to getting over a thousand non fellow members. But then we kind of go back down and we get really close. So one of the goals that I would like to have is to actually get that over a thousand and then maintain that over a thousand, obviously. And so maybe something objectively like a 10% growth rate in that non member, uh, non fellow uh, category. Obviously, a lot of those will end up going on to fellowship, and that's the ultimate. Um, goal, I think, for some individuals, but not for everyone. And so I think that there's ways that we can get those non-fellow members involved and engaged in the academy. And so how that may be done and some of the ways that I think that we can do that is when we do get a new member that signs up, uh, that, that, that becomes an academy member, uh, giving them something very tangible, giving them something that allows for them to gain from the academy what they actually join the academy for. There's a lot of reasons why people will join or become members of organizations or academies and such. Um, and it could be, obviously, um, community, which I think AOMP is a fantastic community, and many of us, uh, we've gained a strong community and network through that. And I think folks are looking for that. But there's also times that folks are looking for, you know, their own leadership development, their own, um, you know, they have a, a, they want to sort of have some level of ownership in the academy as well. And I think that being able to sort of, whether that's a welcome um, packet, a kit of some sort that allows the uh, new member to see all of the opportunities that they can, that they have uh, to reach out and to become involved and engaged and active early, and then we can retain those um, individuals as members and, and whether they go on to um, become fellows or not, um, you know, that ultimately is them, but we still strengthen our academy. So I think that those would be some things that I would like to do and at least lay the seeds for that. Because three years, I'm, it's weird that I'm actually here talking to you um, for this interview candidacy because I feel like I just started. And so three years goes by, as we all know, um, like that. So that would be my, I guess, uh, mission and how I would think that. Well, thanks very much. Okay, final question. Um, can you... Um, tell us what the best advice you've ever received is. Yes, I think I can. I think I'm trying to. I'm trying to take the advice right now as I'm actually about ready to say it, and that is, um, shut up and listen. <laughs> uh, and that actually came from one of my fellow mentors, and it is amazing in all aspects and areas of my life how that has helped um, immensely. Um, I'm one of those individuals that um, likes to likes to get into the conversation quick, likes to try to fix things fast sometimes, um, and and doing it with a well doing it well meaningfully. But the best thing that I've ever learned how to do is is just be quiet for a while. Just literally count to yourself for like five seconds, and and then see what shapes from that, and then actually truly listen to what the other individuals are saying, whether that's patient care, whether that's uh, working in an organization like the Academy or in my professional uh, role at uh, Duke here, or, you know, to be honest with you, even with my family, <laughs> even with my kids who are, who are younger, maybe they don't deserve my time to be listening to them. It's a fascinating piece of advice. And I, and I really think, uh, you know, from a, from a, a quick, response that is necessary. I think that that's probably the best advice that I've been given. It's something that I've, I'm still always challenged with. Thanks very much. Um, Thank you. Okay, so th th those are the only questions we've got for you where we're sticking to standardized questions. So, um, so we really appreciate your time um, and uh, hope that everyone um, out there has a uh, is, is able to really spend the time and listen to the answers that you provided for us as well. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys for taking time out of your day.